editorial board of the Journal of Steroids and Hormonal Science and Diabetes Open. And he's working on a couple really cool projects, one of which I was the first person to ever see. So I want to share some interesting facts about bones, muscles, hormones, and some other things like that that are going to be really, really impactful and useful for you. And also show you some new stuff that's happening out there that can make a difference for any of those domains of your own health and wellness. His name is John Jakewish. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dave. All right, John. We've talked personally about this. How did you get into all this at the very beginning? Tell me about your mom. Well, it was, yeah, my mother. Uh, <laughs> I was young. Uh, my, my mother, I was an undergrad. My mother came to me and said I've been diagnosed with osteoporosis. So I quickly realized this is a disease of deconditioning. Anything that's deconditioned can become reconditioned. So uh, I looked into what research there was for people who were building like superhuman bone density. Who, who had the most? And it was gymnasts. So it, it really had to do with the way they would impact the ground. And another interesting thing about gymnastics from a research perspective is that we can see what a gymnast does. Their, their movement patterns as they strike the ground is very repeatable. They have to do it the same way every time, otherwise they injure. So very well practiced uh, as, as they do that. So. Uh, I wanted to create a device that emulated high impact forces. So it's the forces going through the musculoskeletal system that trigger the effect. And so I, I realized telling my mother to be a gymnast wasn't the right thing to do. But <laughs> yeah, she appreciated that too. <clears throat> but what we would do is uh, create a fixture where people could get into the positions they would naturally absorb high impact force and then allow them to self-load and give them computerized biofeedback right in front of them. So they know where they are and where they were the last time they did it, therefore if an adaptation occurred in, their, in, that, in that particular kinetic chain, that they would be able to produce more force, so a sh showing a greater level of functional bone performance, because this is a functional test of bone, and you know, and also a stimulus. So they actually be able, they're able to see the function of their bone from a deceleration perspective and from an actual performance and real world perspective as they use the product week after week after week. So my mother reversed her osteoporosis, but here's the thing that really nailed it home. And, and you know, now I'm uh, partnered with uh, Tony Robbins in, uh, in the project, it's called OsteoStrong. Um, there's gonna be clinics, there's already 50 clinics in the United States and there's gonna be, there's already agreements for hundreds more. <clears throat> and, and we're expanding to other countries. So what we know about bone and what bone really is in terms of musculoskeletal health, if you have weak bone and you fire a muscle that's connected to that weak bone in that kinetic chain, there's gonna be neural inhibition because you can't engage a muscle to such a high degree where it will break the bone. Your central nervous system has a process called neural inhibition. You've talked about it before. Neural, neural inhibitory processes will stop the body from damaging itself. So by raising bone density to you know, a higher level, my levels is a plus two, uh, two standard deviations above normal, uh, that enables me to have a stronger chassis, which is taking away a limit of muscle growth. So, so weak bones equals smaller and weaker muscles. That's right. And that's because if you had strong muscles and weak bones, you'd break your bones. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Right. It, it, you can use, I, I like using the automobile analogy. If you take a Formula One engine and put it in a Honda Civic, you just rip the thing apart. You just blow the wheels right off of it. So your central nervous system is smarter than the people who do that sort of thing and put a big engine in a in an economy car uh, because it's trying to keep you in homeostasis. But if you put the body in, in an environment where it is challenged, an extreme environment, then the body's gonna see that extremeness and make the adjustments, therefore the entire musculoskeletal system will benefit. And people all over the world have had tremendous, tremendous gains, tremendous uh, things. The, the CEO of OsteoStrong, uh, guy had chronic back pain, chronic shoulder pain, uh, uh, not a frozen shoulder, but close. Uh, you're going to meet him next week. <clears throat> um, his name's Kyle Zagrodzki, great guy. Uh, 
So he had all kinds of biomechanics problems, and he was even in the fitness industry. He was he he had a bunch of different fitness locations, and he was one of the guys who was early days in curves uh, to get that to get that out there. Always look towards getting audiences that weren't already involved in exercise to try and get them excited about what they can do, you know, from a physical medicine perspective. And so, so he just thought, oh, you know, I'm getting old. He's in his late 40s, and he had a lot of chronic pain, and he starts doing this therapy after we met. And instantly the pain went away. And it's because he's building, not, not just triggering a little muscular growth, it's the bone that's getting stronger and the associated tendons and ligaments and the whole kinetic chain. So for someone listening now, they're like, what the heck is going on that's causing strong bones? So I, I had an interview recently with the guys from Pulse Centers in Georgia, and they were using like pulse electromagnetic frequencies to drive bone density. Uh, and you've probably seen me on Facebook Live or on my Instagram page doing that on occasion. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one way to do it. But you found a, a way that takes probably less time than anything else I've ever heard of, like stuff that's almost stupidly effective. Yeah. How does it work? Like, what is the OsteoStrong thing? It's a, it's a couple seconds. I mean, the actual okay. action of what's going on. So <clears throat> and people ask me, oh, it, it, the whole therapy protocol it takes 10 minutes. Nothing could take 10 minutes. You only do it once a week also because the metabolic rate of bone is longer than the metabolic rate of muscle. But by the way, that, that's one of the reasons I wanted you on the show is that exercising for an hour and a half a day, every day, six days a week, like I did when I weighed 300 pounds mm -hmm. and I didn't get results. It's a huge freaking waste of time. Like I want the minimum amount of exercise that's going to get what I want. And when you told me 10 minutes once a week in order to drive bone density and it works for your grandmother and it works for bodybuilders, yep. like that, that got my attention. And I know that you know your science because we know each other and we've, we've talked at length about stuff. Yep. So this is why this is disruptive. This is why this is biohacking and, and just worthy of talking about. So people go in and what the, you said there's 50 locations and I've, I've seen the gear once. Uh, mm -hmm. So what is just kind of describe what what the process is and why you can drive bone density that way? So it's there's four positions you go through and you sit in these fixtures that uh, are uh, the robotic So you log in and it's got all your measurements and it closes in on you so that you're in exactly the right position So it's highly calculated robotic musculoskeletal therapy and then you basically like let's say you're in an impact position you push away from yourself and the movement you see is actually the compression of bone. It's not, the machine's not moving at all. And then you have a computer screen in front of you that's telling you uh, what your functional bone performance is in that kinetic so, movement. So you're doing something that looks like a push up, but it's a push up where you're on a seat that's not gonna move, pushing against a surface that won't move. Right. So all the energy goes into flexing and compressing the bones. Compressing a bone on its axis. Okay. So, you know, this is the axis of my clavicle. I want to compress it this way. So you have to compress it from end to end, towards end the middle. To end to end, right. So, like, every once in a while, I'll come across somebody who says, well, I foam roll for bone density. That's how I get the pressure on bone. And I'm looking at them like... Bone fibers are aligned a certain way. It doesn't work. Right, like right. Like, I have to, like you do, like, do I really want to have this argument? Or <laughs> just go, okay. Yeah. All right, so foam rolling has its place uh, for sure, yeah, for but sure. for bone density, that's not one of the technologies that I would necessarily recommend Correct. either. Yeah. All right, so you're doing what amounts to an isometric exercise where you're wedged into a place where you neither none of your body can move, so all the force has to compress the bones because yeah. you're aligned properly. Right. And so right. one is a push-up-like position. What are the other three positions that people uh, go through? One is where the, the hips, like the 120-degree angle behind the knee, uh, where you're like you would strike the ground. Like a leg press, sort of like a squat. Yeah, like a like a leg press kind of squat kind of thing. Then there's another one for the core to distort the ribs. Now the bone actually gets distorted slightly. So we have some stop motion photography that uh, I think it's on the OsteoStrong website, uh, where you can actually see an individual postmenopausal female go from relaxation to compression, and you can see movement, but nothing moves in the machine. The movement is from the axial compression of bone. Wow. So you she's see actually it. You can, you mushing don't, yeah, her Yeah, it's like some, some uh, I was just having a conversation with uh, like head of orthopedics uh, in um, Sweden uh, uh, or in this huge, huge, huge medical group. And so this, uh, this guy was asking me, like, do you think we could ever get some sort of like PQCT, which is a CT scan of like limbs where we could see a little bit of the compression and this guy's so excited about learning uh, 
orthopedic surgeons always understand this because they understand the physical mechanics of bone and they also put screws and pins into bad bone and good bone. So they're very familiar with this. So the guy says maybe, uh, you know, tiny CT scan of a bone and maybe we could actually see some of the compression. I sent him that picture. You can, you can see it with your eye. (laughs) You don't even, you don't need a CT scan. So, uh, So, Pretty so cool. you can compress your legs that way you, you do. So you do like a squat, you do a push up, and the other two positions, uh, there's one for the core, okay, where you're pulling down. The, the rib cage, and then there's one for the spine. Okay. And that's basically like a deadlift kind of position, but these are all, yeah. these are all without any actual motion other right. than, than compression <laughs> of your bones. Right. And you do, it takes about 10 minutes once a week. And the idea behind osteo strong is that the gear to do this is pretty big and heavy. So you, you're going to go into a location right. once a week for 10 minutes, like on your lunch hour or something, yeah. do this and then get a digital tracking of what's happening right. to your, your bone density and your strength. Cause they go up together. So your ligaments right. get better, your bones get better. And this is one of those ways of taking what would be uh, tens of thousands of dollars of gear and making it very accessible to people. $100,000 of gear. That's a hundred thousand dollar machine. Yeah, there it's you go. Extraordinarily I don't have one. Expensive. Yeah, I don't have one at home. <laughs> no, no, you do not. <laughs> I would not recommend that. Yeah. Get a location near right. your uh, place in Canada. It, and also like 10 minutes once a week is not worth it. it like that, that's a, that's a, that's right. enough to go do it. But if you're, to, you're to spend a hundred grand to have something like that at home, you probably should buy a Tesla. Right. right. I mean, you don't have a barber <laughs> chair at your house either. Uh, exactly. Right. So, but, but it's, it's a small enough amount of time with a big enough benefit that that's why I'm, I'm intrigued at this. All right. Let's say that someone doesn't have an osteo strong location near them and they wanted to do some bone density stuff at home. Uh, what could they do to improve bone density now? It would be very difficult for me to ethically say that they ought to go out and do high impact exercise. However, <clears throat> some athletic people, uh, they may not be doing high impact activity or they may be and they don't know. So another thing I created is an iPhone application called Fracture Proof. And what Fracture Proof does is you, you get download the application and uh, the application actually benefits American Bone Health. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. so trying to help the education system to try and get people uh, more up to speed on, on what they need to do to grow bone. So uh, a little bit of it goes back to a, a study that was done in Bristol United Kingdom a couple years ago that determined and this, this is one of the most important things in this discussion, the minimum dose response. So like anytime somebody tests a drug, it's like how little of this drug, when you were, were experimenting with brain octane, how little of this do we need to trigger the intended effect? Right. So in increased cognitive abilities, if you're allowed to say that, I, I'm part of the company, so more, I am. More, more uh, mitochondrial energy does interesting go. things to the brain. I, I could say that. Right. Okay. So, uh, so the minimum. So there, this group uh, in, in the United Kingdom, they did a study where they attached accelerometers to people, and then they had them go through high-impact activities through whatever they did, uh, whether it was sports or some of the older people just, just went through their activities of daily living uh, or exercise class, kind of cardio type stuff and tried to determine, or they did determine with crossing the accelerometer data with regular blood draws, because you can test somebody's blood for bone turnover markers. Like if you go through high impact and we test your blood, if the impact is high enough, there are markers that show that there's been an effect of, of growth. Uh, uh, it's called the remodeling effect. <clears throat> so osteoclastic activity happens first, and then osteoblastic activity happens later. So uh, what was so profound about the study is they discovered what the minimum dose response for triggering bone growth is. Like, this is awesome. So, so is what like, is it? For, well, okay, let, but let me back up. For 100 years, uh, Dr. Julius Wolf, he had people jumping off of tables, and after they would die, and this is 100 years ago, after they would die, he'd get the cadaver and he'd right. saw... From jumping off the table? No. They, when they would <laughs> die of natural causes, <laughs> he would saw into their bone and, and look at it and say, okay, the people who went through high impact had higher bone density. So uh, it's the, called the law of mechanotransduction. Everybody who's been to medical school has studied this. So <clears throat> th- while he made that observation, he had no way to determine what that minimum dose response was. This is why every educational body recommends resistance to grow bone. Now, resistance in high impact is a lot different than resistance like at a gym. 
because you like a, a gymnast, for example, get 10 times their body weight when they slam against the ground from a, a dismount of like the uneven bars. So nobody goes to the gym and lifts 10 times. Nobody, hardly anybody lifts two times. In fact, according to the American College of Sports Medicine, mo, uh, the average of people who exercise on a regular basis, they load their lower extremities with 1.3 times their body weight. So if the minimum dose response, which was discovered in this study, was 4.2 multiples of body weight, that's what it was. That's the minimum. So, so you're saying lifting weights won't really affect bone density? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it can happen uh, if you are, are at a very high degree, maybe if you're doing like strong range partials, maybe if you're also doing high impact. But, I mean, there's other variables besides the environmental signal that tells the bones to go strong. Because if you're lifting, you're going to get more testosterone, bone density. You're going to get more IGF-1. You're going to get more <laughs> growth hormone. You're going to get better circulation. You, you might right. change how you eat. You might right. get more vitamin K2. You'll get more collagen stimulus. But those are tiny things that affect bone density compared to well, the yeah. right loading, which is a huge signal sure. to grow. Those are building blocks. But you still need the signal. Like yep. A guy with high testosterone that doesn't do any exercise is not going to build big muscle. Right. So you can have the IGF, you can have the high testosterone, you can have the calcium, the vitamin D. If you're not putting load on bone, not a whole lot's going to happen. And right. That's been shown. And yes, there are some little degrees. Uh, usually calcium and vitamin D can slow down the loss. Yeah. And, you and K2 seems to be particularly K2, important. K2, yeah, 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 another huge one. Okay. Uh, so, what th so what this study discovered, this 4.2 multiples body mm -hmm. weight, they determined that the people who failed to achieve 4.2 didn't grow any bone. They never had the turnover markers present with a high level of statistical significance. But the people who exceeded 4.2 multiples body weight did have uh, bone turnover, and but so they were able to grow bone. What about things like the Bulletproof Vibe? One of the things that they use uh, whole body vibration for, and the reason we chose the frequencies that are in the Bulletproof Vibe is it's what NASA uses to help, to help astronauts get reconditioned after getting no stimulus on their bone in space. Right. So this is a vertical vibration 30 times a second. And I know you've, you've studied the whole body vibration space very extensively. Mm. Is there any usefulness for bone density for people who are already healthy with, with bone density there? And it's okay to say no. I mean, I, there, there's studies that go both <laughs> ways that I know of. So Yeah, the, the right answer is no. Uh, right. Well, but there's a but. <laughs> there are studies no, that go both ways. No, the vibration does not do anything for bone. What the vibration can do is increase the, somebody's biomechanics. So if somebody is uh, highly deconditioned, uh, very poor biomechanics, kyphotic, they can f start to fire some of the stabilizing muscles. So then they can go on and, and do more impact-like activity, or they can do this osteogenic loading therapy. So, so on a typical vibration plate, <clears throat> how many times your body weight is going to happen at the bottom of the vibration? Just the body weight. Body weight. Well, no, there's acceleration. I mean, Nine point two meters to, per second. To have square. it be relevant uh -huh. in trabecular bone, yep. you have to account for uh, the accommodation of skin being pushed together. Yep. You have to accommodate for the natural process of all the tendinous, ligamentous uh, material there, which is designed to decelerate mm -hmm. someone. Yep. And muscle is completely designed to decelerate you. Right. So the it's it's difficult to determine because a lot of the vibration manufacturers there's a lot of a, crap out there <laughs> they played a a a silly game with mathematics to mm -hmm. say that your you know gravity is six times normal when you're standing on the vibration plate that's ridiculous that yeah, that's like they the might case. as well put a blinking light on it and say you're 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 exercising at the speed of light <laughs> it, it's yeah it's it just and 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 i was involved with the vibration company and the the the, th the stuff that is out there was appalling. Now, yeah, there's a lot nothing of stuff I was involved that, with. But, yeah, but there's yeah. a lot of stuff that will ruin your low back. And, and when I started experimenting like 15 years ago, I, I hurt my hips and my back with the side-to-side -side stuff, and I broke a couple of machines. But I saw benefits. So that's why I ended yeah. up doing, doing it the way I did it. So you're saying that there are benefits to it, but they're mostly neurological yeah. and circulation based. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I, I would support that. And there are studies that say if you have osteoporosis, if your bones are very weak, you can see benefits from it. But if you have strong bones, they're not going to give you superhuman yeah, but, bones. But see, the highly controlled studies mm -hmm. found no effect. Some of the poorer controlled studies mm -hmm. did see some effect. 
So I could say there was something nefarious going on, but what I think what was going on is they didn't control the activity of the participants in the study. So if we take somebody yeah, who's kyphotic and Define doesn't have kyphotic the, for the audience, just yeah, hun hunched over like some of the older people that they just have, or, or their, or, or their in, head is just translated. In, a anyone little with bit. an iPhone? <laughs> yeah, anyone who looks down at their iPhone. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you have poor biomechanics, you're not going to be able to absorb impact level force. So when you improve somebody's biomechanics and don't control their other activity through the whole period of the study, if you're going to study somebody's bone density, it's going to be over a long period of time. So, uh, you know, like it, right. you can't tell them, oh, all of a sudden, if you feel fantastic, you're not allowed to go out and run around in a field and play soccer with your kids or something like that. So if all of a sudden they start improving their activity and that may have a tiny bone density effect. But even, even the best studies that showed a bone density effect, which I, like I said, they were the poorly controlled ones, it was, it, it's it was very minuscule. Yeah. It, it's more about lymphatic circulation, and I do see a lot of tightness when I, when I do it, like versus going for a walk, there's a mitochondrial stimulation and things. So I'm, I remain a fan of, of whole body vibration oh, done right. Oh, oh, but it, for bone density, it's not a strong signal compared to jumping off tables or in the case of what you're doing with osteo strong, right. loading the bones properly. Right. And I, I definitely like you can, you just, you feel it when you do it. It's a very different kind of exercise yeah. uh, than lifting weights when you're doing yeah. osteo strong. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. So people, osteo strong will become available for people. And I'm assuming it's osteo strong.com. Yeah. Osteo strong dot me dot me. Okay, cool. And, and that's something that you're partnering with Tony Robbins on. And, yeah. And okay, well, let's talk about Tony for a minute. Cause I, I've, I'm, Fortunate that That's Tony's cool invited me to speak at his Unleash the Power Within right. conference. I'm on the regular agenda now, so I speak to like 15,000 people on a regular awesome. basis. It, it yeah. just blows me away. You know what it's like. Uh, and Tony, when you go backstage, he's got a trampoline, like a mini trampoline. And yeah. I, I don't know any human being, and I know a lot of crazy madmen out there, um, who has the raw energy production ability of Tony Robbins. Like he throws off heat. He's got air conditioners blowing on him on stage mm -hmm. and he's just, he's, he's emoting. He's like sending a yeah. signal, but backstage he's got every piece of biohacking gear, everything he can to just give him more energy. Yep. And right there is a trampoline. Mm -hmm. What are the effects of rebounding on bone density? Because it's cushioned at the bottom. Very little. Yeah. Yeah. That's now, you might get ligament improvements though from vibration and bouncing, or does that also require the same thing? That's not as researched. Okay. So it would be difficult to say. I could guess well, there'd so be more of one. So, so you're, I mean, you're, you're a research professional. Uh, you've, you've been studying yeah. this stuff your whole life. You've worked with pro athletes and lots and lots of people. So whether or not there are studies in your experience, what would you guess given that you know more than almost anyone else and you've seen more than almost anyone else right. and you had to flip a coin, what side is it going to land on? It would land on the tendon and ligament improvement. Side. Okay. I, I tend to think that's right too, but yeah. I don't have anywhere near your level of experience in that yeah. part of it. So it, it seems likely. All right. What it's, it, one of the problems here is mm -hmm. that it, it's like um, no one does cancer studies on uh, diets with a lot of high fat and vegetables, right? Yep. Because there's not a lot of business to be done. Yep. Like nobody's going to sell a product that's going to potentially make a trillion dollars or billions of dollars or something like that. Uh, to tell people to go eat vegetables and high fat diet, right? Yep. So we're just not going to get that level of study. Right, no, we're not going to get a pharma it. level study there. Yeah. So that's the okay. problem with all physical medicine interventions like that. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. And frankly, if you have a study that says a food has a medical effect on you, you're not allowed to speak about it because then you're accused of selling food as a drug. So a lot of the research that exists around things like collagen or brain octane, I'm legally forbidden to tell you what it actually does. Right. And, and <laughs> to insane. make things even worse, if you did a clinical trial on it, they would say, oh, this needs to be controlled. But yeah, yeah, I still can't say it. If yeah, I, you still can't it say me it. Nuts. So even if you do everything right and play by the FDA's rules, then you're just fenced off in another area. So, yeah. So, so I, I can tell you, it makes you feel good. Yep. <laughs> you can say that. Now, you're working on another project. 